gonna show a uh, video about the electrical industrial stuff you know, for the uh, group teams or I can't really say clan we got like seven eight people uh, who who play so uh, what does the electrician do in this base normally so I gotta go through each system we'll show what it does and uh, yeah and then we go from there so anyway this is called a main circuit uh, this is a blocker blocker circuit I've been using this circuit for nearly two and a half years uh, I got taught by another guy who was uh, really really good in electricity and ever since I've been using exactly the same, uh, same circuit so nothing changes. The logic here is that uh, the power is coming directly from the windmills and uh, everything rest goes back to batteries. If there's not enough power from the windmills then the batteries ob obviously kick in. You can also change the circuit uh, that you can add also the uh, the uh, generators if you want to so you can do like a triple fa fail safe so it's uh, if the windmills don't have enough power it kicks in the batteries if the batteries don't have enough power then the generators will kick in uh, however for this base i've chosen to have just the windmills and batteries because we we have way too much power going on here so the whole circuit itself is using uh, 1200 uh, rust watts and uh, everything rest gets fed back to the battery. So let's say if there is a raid going on or or somebody decides to raid from, uh, from the top down, uh, let's say they will destroy the windmills. We have a, let me find it, where are they? I think it was floor below, yeah it is here. There we go. We have, uh, yeah, batteries and they're all full. So, well, we got uh, three different devices. They are controlled by a smart switch on the Rust Plus app. So for example, if there is a raid, all I need to do is hop on the camera uh, on the uh, in the computer station or just look at the camera on the Rust Plus app and just open the doors. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Every single splitter has like every yeah every output here has two auto turrets connected so right now we're looking at 70 75 auto turrets you can go up to you can go over 100 easily so yeah so right now you ev everything is off everything is on this switch here controls the uh, the doors i will show that in a second then we have a three alerts again these are connected to either you can you connect them into rust link if you want to then it will spam the discord uh, message saying that hey something is going on and this is uh, for industrial uh, stuff each branch it's it's a group uh, it's it does something very very specific so for example when you build something like this, you have to keep in mind what is your priority. So for example, the first branch, this here, controls all the auto turrets. So let's say if the power goes off, it will eliminate the power from the useless stuff and keeps the most important. So technically, I can, if let's say I'm gonna mimic a situation that, uh, hey, I only have 600 power left, you see, the auto, tur uh, auto turrets would still be on, no matter what. So. So yeah, um, so I gotta put it back to 1200. This counter shows how much power we're actually using. So the first interesting system, I guess, I think what a lot of players are trying to do or they want to get is the automatic TC filler. So yeah, we have that thing going on. So it fills the TC up on its own. Uh, yeah, you set it up once, you forget about it, and that's pretty much it. Um, let me let me remove all of that. There we go. All right. So when we start playing, like this, this was the starter here. So a lot of these loot rooms, they are not really used. They were used at the start. Uh, so right now they just sit empty. Um, in theory you can use them for something, but I've chosen not to do it for anything with them, so... 
Let me show you what's going on in a core. Each side of the base we have a thing called drop box. Uh, you can just drop stuff in. Uh, you came, I don't know, from farming or whatever. You just drop them into drop box and uh, everything gets distributed inside the core to somewhere. And uh, let's have a look what's going on in a core. And this here is a core. Uh, open core design. We have an awesome builder. I am not a builder. I'm just doing the electrics and the industrial stuff because it takes way too much time to do it. So I can't, like, I would not be able to focus on two things. And also, I'm, I'm like a shit builder. You know, I barely can do like one by two, and uh, that's pretty much it. Everywhere around the base, we we have the thing like Dropbox, and if you drop something into into a Dropbox, it will go into one of those boxes so let's say uh, I don't know let's take let's take for example low grade if I will pick this up I'm gonna put it into a drop box it should come back in here here we go and uh, everything is filtered we just set it up and say that okay this item goes there this goes there so and uh, from here there is one single connection, so yeah, so from this single connection it goes into all of those boxes and this connection here goes out, so we, we can use this to either f uh, fill the stuff for the uh, workbenches or uh, this annoying box, which I don't like it, but uh, for whatever reason guys enjoy it, maybe it's some kind of, I don't know, old veteran player thing where you can uh, where you need a small box under a workbench but anyway they like it so we'll just keep it so yeah uh, as you can see if i if i remove everything it will just refill it so so it's easy and convenient just to get all the stuff uh, once you've done with this, uh, yeah with the stuff you can just put it back to dropbox it will just refill everything same with the lockers I can take all the stuff here and I don't know if, yeah, and here you go, and it just refills it. So it's very, very quick. Uh, yeah, you just, if you die, you just uh, take a new gear and go out. That's pretty much it. Yeah, so this controls the gears for the uh, lockers. In a previous wipe, I had about 10, 15 different lockers. This wipe, uh, the uh, Face Punch made a slight mistake about the lockers, uh, or sorry, the filtering system, and I don't like it. It's, for example, tactical gloves, you see, I don't see that item here. Um, let's say swim something, you see, it doesn't show even the swimming gear. So, for this wipe, I've just uh, kept like, with one locker and uh, the other lockers are uh, manually filled. These two controllers, they control the main TC and external. So this one is how much resources I want to keep in a, uh, external TCs. The hammer and building plan is not gonna work. I already checked it. And uh, yeah, this is for the main TC. Uh, whenever it needs to fill, it will just keep it there. Let's go to the next system. So these are the branches I was talking about. So each one branch controls two auto turrets. Um, if you could do it with the splitters, but uh, I've chosen to have it with the branches, it's less messy and uh, they're way smaller than the, the than the splitters. So on the roof, uh, we have a sensors which are connected to Rust Plus app. Uh, if there is non TC auth member uh, recognized in the uh, roof area, it will send out a ping and it's gonna start spamming the Rust Plus uh, saying that hey, somebody is on, is on your roof and this is the roof protection itself. So let's say if there is somebody detected, it will spam for 10 seconds, then it rechecks again using the memory cell until the ping is gone. So here we got one, two, three, four, five, six, the, in total of six HPHFs on the roof. Above is uh, windmills, they go down downstairs, all the windmills. So these are windmills first stage connections, so you, you have like a three stages. Yeah, everywhere we have auto turrets. Uh, here we go. These auto turrets are designed to f 
focus in the, into core. I think if I'm gonna go here, yeah, here we go. Yeah, same here. So these are targeting inside the turret. Each outer turret has a python in, in them. Before I do that, I wanna also check something here, if I can do the example of it. So I'm gonna put a 5000 here, move some. Okay, so these are a door controller. So I'm right now on my Rust Plus app and let's say if there is a raid going on, I can virtually control the doors like this. So you can hear the sound and we're about to get, get to there and see what it is. Before that, I'll show you some a little bit different stuff. So here. So this is an automatic shop. So in this area where we are, it's very hard to get cloth. We can't set up a far farm bases here. To have a farm base, uh, you need to have like over 150 tarps. There are, there are no rivers around here and we're way too lazy to go and uh, build uh, somewhere near the river. So we have shop here, which basically automatically puts stuff in and sells it for, and then it picks up uh, the stuff that we want and it uh, goes into the core. So right now the shop is on. If I turn it off, it will not go into pool, but it will uh, pull the resources, whatever we're selling. I wanted to add way more shops, but uh, uh, for now it's kind of pointless to do it. So here, this one is a auto furnace. Uh, I'm not a creator. The guy, whoever came up with it is a fucking genius. And uh, I'm using the same logic uh, that he showed, a little bit modified. I'm using a large furnaces for that. And I, I'm about to show you how that thing works. And here we are looking at the external doors. So these doors are here not for the protection of the base. It's more of a protection for the uh, outer turrets so they don't get HV'd, uh, HV'd at. So if something happens, uh, one person can keep controlling the doors uh, just to shoot and uh, and yeah, and these here are out of the outer furnaces, which I'm about to show you how it works. I just need a little bit of ore, and luckily we have an ore going on here. So how it works is, let me have a quick check if there is anything in the furnaces right now. Yeah, they're empty, which is good. So. If I will just drop the stuff in here, or if it's even an open core, it should turn them on. Ah, here we go. That's it. Once it's done, it's gonna go back to open core, and uh, that's it. And same thing, it works with the with this one here. So let's see if I can get this as well. It should work. Yeah, maybe maybe I messed up with the this one a little bit but I, I need to have a look but right now it's kind of end of wipe situation and uh, and yeah not gonna bother okay uh, it's maybe it's maybe 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 because of the oh here we go so it's there 10 10 yeah, I need to have a look. Once everything is cooked, it's gonna get back into the main base, open core. And then obviously from there, metal frags, sulfur, whatever, you can use it to do gunpowder, uh, pistol bullets, uh, 5.56, rockets, whatever. And uh, because of the latest update, we can also craft multiple things at the same time. Now, I have not done really anything with the crafter though, just to like have meds or, or something. So we just control it here and uh, it will produce meds until the box is full and uh, all the meds will be again shared into lockers and people just hop on. They just take whatever the hell they need. And then, uh, yeah, it just gets re refilled and that's pretty much it. Um, Take this, this. I'll show you some external external TCs. We also use the uh, new CCTV cameras, which is on the corner there. So let's say if I'm working, I'm at, I'm at office, I can just turn it on real quick to have a look. So, all right. So here you go. It gets filled automatically. I'm not sure about hammer and uh, this stuff, but it should work. 
The area here is it's not even, so it looks a little bit ugly and uh, but I mean it is what it is. We have a really good spot near the launch site. So I think building when I when I like when everybody starts playing uh, oh oh okay I forgot one more thing before I go there so each external wall has an uh, XOR switch so if the wall gets destroyed uh, it will break the link and it will send out alarm uh, saying that hey somebody's uh, raiding you there is a wall a broken wall there yeah so that's an additional additional thing and what I wanted to do also is put the XOR switches in the middle or outer side of the walls in the middle because that's like usual place where people start like raiding and they just build a raid base and they just start pounding until they're inside the core so that was the another idea uh, what to do but uh, we didn't really get there we, we had like a uh, I mean I can't say it was a raid it was more like a siege these guys just built extremely high tower and they just started bombarding us with the HVs trying to take out all the turrets and that's why uh, we had to react real quick and uh, just start building the turret pods and uh, after that siege I'm like okay hell hell with it I'm going to put some uh, doors down here and uh, and uh, protect the outer turrets uh, with the uh, with the normal double doors and the reason I'm using double doors is because they are way quicker than the garage doors uh, regarding the reaction each windmill you see that wire in there so each windmill yeah we got we got like 11 12 windmills on top of the roof and then everything rest we can build on the externals now that circuit that i'm using uh, a blocker blocker circuit uh, can only handle maximum 1600 ross watts you cannot go any higher i have a circuits where you can build two kinds of circuits so one is in the bottom floor the second one is on the top floor if the bottom uh, circuit that gets uh, destroyed or it's broken it will automatically revert and start using the uh, top floor circuit so it's uh, either way it's uh, extremely defended when we start the wipe the first six hours are the most crucial so basically you, you like you farm up all the stuff and then you you have to work with the builder like you can't simply you know start building electricity and start connecting stuff uh, because you have to wait until certain section is done only then you can connect uh, something additionally and uh, and so on like you need to you need to be really synced with the builder you need to know what the base uh, what is, what is the base the builder is building you know you need to speak with him ask what's the most uh, like what are the most secure areas in the base and uh, then you just start thinking okay maybe i should put the batteries in there uh, obviously you want to distribute the batteries all across the across the base so you're not going to have a situation where oh i'm going to just send out a couple of rockets into that specific room and all the power goes off so it's really important to uh, make sure that everything is spread the same thing is going on with the outer turrets you don't want to have outer turrets connecting uh, with the one-sided connection you want to spread it so for example you saw those branches here you see so one branch is to the left side the second uh, second uh, branch output is uh, uh, for the right side so it's it's like spread out you don't want to make like oh this controls only this specific area or uh, uh, this uh, specific uh, controls only this area yeah you want to spread them out uh, definitely because if something happens you know you're still gonna have like a power coming from that side and uh, powering the devices on this side so uh, I did make a make a mistake earlier, and I only realized it way way later. Up here, yeah, I put way too many branches here. I should have like distributed it with the other side as well. But uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's kind of end of the wipe. Uh, nobody has dared dared to uh, to raid us. Um, so we 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 just been hanging out like for last two three days, just like occasionally checking, and the guys are like a bit tired. And they're like, okay, let's take a break. So, so yeah, and that's the reason I'm making a video, and uh, we'll see what happens next. So, the cheater, uh, cheater protection, uh, like the, the guys who can move around and uh, check through the walls and stuff, like that's the reason I'm using the HPHFs because, like, 
like people who are using cheats, they normally do it very, very specifically and ex like directly into the DC. So you want to uh, technically place the HPHFs everywhere because uh, they try to figure out the cheapest way to go through the doors. They will not going to go through the walls. It's way too expensive, way too uh, time consuming. So what they normally would do is like they go on the roof. Um, then uh, get some uh, HVs, take out all the auto turrets, then they're gonna start like door by door and they go directly into the core uh, or if they want to take over, over they go straight to a TC room but I mean normally they would stop with the core um, and yeah I can show you some uh, yeah, how the base looks overall So that's our uh, sniping tower, and here is our uh, CCTV camera, which we can use the Ross Plus app to have a look what's going on, if the raid, uh, if the raid base have been built or not. And the similar, there is another camera right over here. There we go. So another camera again is looking that direction, looking for if any raid base has been uh, built. Same thing, we put down the external TCs just to make sure or annoy the uh, raid base builders as much as possible. So, because we know that like building on this specific side is a little bit tricky, so we are kind of defended on this area. And uh, I think lastly, yeah, so I'm using also searchlights and all that stuff, and uh, this is purely because, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of evil, but uh, it's to reduce the FPS of attackers, because uh, at the end of the day, if they build a raid base, they need to look at the boom, uh, and plus, you know, when the when the base is fully built, you, you gotta have some FPS issues, and uh, it's very, very difficult to be on a raider side if you if you shoot from the base side you you'll be absolutely fine but uh, whenever you look at the base and you try to rocket it your fps can go down to like 15 to 20 so uh, that's like yeah that's one of the reasons why i guess people don't want to raid these big bases so there are a couple ideas i wanted to add more like for example loot moving if uh, if let's say somebody's detected on the roof, uh, then the loot is being distributed across the four sections of the base. And uh, if one of those sections gets destroyed, then the loot is again moved uh, and so on. So you could do something like that. It's uh, it's fairly easy to do it. And uh, to build something like this, it takes like nearly 15 to 20 hours uh, of game time. So you pretty much like for two days, you just uh, literally doing the uh, doing the uh, electricity and that's it if you have any questions you can add me on discord uh, I'll help you out uh, well if you're an electrician you want to know uh, more about it about the blocker blocker uh, circuit I can show you definitely that's pretty much it peace out hope you enjoyed it